from Kramer Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. With electricity theft resulting in about 15.9 billion rand loss to the country's municipal accounts every year, ESCOM anti-theft campaign Operation Kanisa is increasing its reach. Megan van Vanguard was on site when illegal connections were cut in the Shenang village in the northwest. Operation Kanisa has identified the northwest province along with Mpumalanga, Free State, Limpopo, Gauteng and KwaZulu-Natal as the provinces with the highest level of electricity theft. In the northwest, electricity theft amounted to 7.41% in 2015-16, down from the 9.05% in 2013-2014. Operation Kanisa Marketing Project Manager Madeline Kadzinga tells us more. These people illegally connect or use electricity, so therefore it overloads the system and it causes outages. We also address meter bypassing and tempering, where people temper with their meter so that they consume a lot of energy and they, it records minimum energy. Through Operation Kanisa, Theft-related losses have reduced from 7.12% in 2013 to 6.43% in 2016, translating to a 1.4 billion rand a year in electricity that would have generated a loss. We also find that uh, people are buying and selling illegal prepaid vouchers, uh, where maybe, for example, one pays 100 rands for electricity worth 600 rands. Already it's theft. And another thing, people are doing non-payment. So some of these consequences, consequences that comes with electricity theft is electrocution, uh, safety risks, outages, job losses, uh, economic downturn. The campaign also tries to address some barriers. You find that people, when they illegally connect, they are doing that sometimes because they cannot afford. Uh, paying electricity but the campaign comes with a message and encouragement and advice to the people that cannot afford to go to the nearest municipalities to go and apply for free basic electricity. Katsinga adds that Operation Kanisa did not just cut illegal electricity connections but also set out to save lives and educate offenders. Sometimes they don't know that it's a crime, they don't know that it's theft but what it means is people are using electricity that is not meant for them or it's meant for them but they are not paying. Most people when they do it, especially in the residential uh, sector, what they do is they illegally connect and it's very unsafe, especially to the innocent children or innocent people because whatever that when they illegally connect they can pass by crisscrossing wires and uh, they can easily get electric electrocuted and also if you see those crisscrossing wires that you see from one house to another from uh, a neighbor to another or from one uh, house or a neighbor what happens there is at the end of the day one can easily you know hang get hanged on that line and then it one can easily get electrocuted or those lines they can get in contact with water because they are not positioned on the right space, because people have done it unethically and in a wrong way. So at the end of the day, it's very dangerous. When people bypass the meter, they are also bypassing their lives. We need to educate and enlighten the public to say whatever that they are doing in terms of connecting illegally, using electricity illegally, it's a crime and it's uh, punishable by law. Other news making headlines this week. Transnet to terminate trillion relationship seeks future growth apology. State-owned logistics group Transnet will be terminating its relationship with both Trillion Capital and Regiments Capital in light of the current fallout surrounding the two companies. In terms of um, the uh, statements that have been in the media uh, around Trillion, um, just a short um, version of it is that um, um, Regiments used to be a subcontractor here to McKinsey. They graduated into a contractor working with McKinsey. They then came to us indicating uh, that um, they intended to restructure their business and that um, part of what they intended to do was uh, to cede certain aspects of that contract to a new entity called Trillian, which was really a restructure of uh, some of the uh, same people that were doing work here. Um, um, and that that entity would be renamed Trillian. They continued to do the work and um, they did the work and we were satisfied 
um, with the work that they did um, uh, within uh, the company. Um, they then came back um, and said, look, uh, the intention of us uh, restructuring is no longer there. Um, and it would seem that um, uh, there is quite a lot of bad blood between what was going to become Trillian and what is going to become Regiments. And I think there is a lot of power play that is taking place in the marketplace. Unfortunately, our name is being dragged um, uh, into that. Uh, we have uh, done our own reviews um, uh, around uh, some of these issues and I'm satisfied that uh, uh, based on uh, the continuing investigations that we have done, that we have received full value uh, for what Trillian did um, at um, uh, that particular time. Um, but also, um, as Transnet, we have resolved that um, uh, a continued relationship either with Trillian or Regiments um, uh, is not um, in our interest and uh, we are terminating that particular relationship uh, with those entities as we, we do not want to be dragged into their own domestic fights in the manner and way in which that has happened because um, uh, the repu reputation uh, of Transnet is precious and we want to retain that. That's Creamer Media's Real Economy Reports. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.